Hello and welcome to the second day of the Go ESG ASEAN Corporate Sustainability Virtual Summit, ASEAN's premier virtual corporate sustainability conference and exhibition focusing on ESG and sustainable development. I'm your MC for today, Frida Liu. This premier regional sustainability summit is made possible with the support of our collaborators, Sarao Energy, Epernas, CMM, Wolstec, and our partners, Tata Consultancy Services, SME Corp Malaysia, Martre, and other supporting organizations, CDP, GRI, UNSCAP, and regional global compact networks in Indonesia, Philippines, Singapore, and Thailand. Today, yesterday's focus was on SMEs. Today, we're focusing on corporate ASEAN. And to kick off today's session, please help me welcome Mr. Stefan Pritzner, UN Resident Coordinator for Malaysia, Singapore, and Brunei Darussalam, United Nations. Over to you, Mr. Pritzner. Good morning, uh, dear colleagues. Good to meet uh, all of you at the Go ESG Corporate Sustainability Virtual Summit. And I'd like to send my warmest greetings on behalf of the United Nations team in Malaysia from uh, Kuala Lumpur. Let me uh, also uh, immediately at the beginning uh, extend a very warm uh, greetings to my distinguished UN colleague, Mr. Elliot Harris, the Assistant Secretary General for Economic Development and the Chief Economist of the United Nations, who will deliver today's keynote. And I'd also like to greet uh, Ms. Sanda Ojiambo, the CEO and uh, Executive Director of the United Nations Global Compact. Congratulations to my colleagues from the Global Compact Network team in Malaysia for putting together this very timely conference. Ladies and gentlemen, looking at the ESG agenda from the United Nations angle, the first message is that we have an unprecedented blueprint available, namely the Agenda 2030 with its 17 sustainable development goals. And of course, also other instruments such as the Paris Agreement, but the SDGs are comprehensive. And they just celebrated a few weeks ago, the five-year anniversary, namely on September 25th, uh, 2020. They are a comprehensive, visionary concept to build inclusive, sustainable, and peaceful societies. And there's a very, very important role of the private sector, which is deeply connected with the ESG agenda. However, despite many actors already contributing to the agenda in the first five years of its existence, between 2015 and 2020, the overall message at the beginning of this year was that progress was too slow. Therefore, the Secretary General of the United Nations called for a decade of action between 2020 to 2030. COVID-19 came a few weeks later and provided a further setback to the SDGs, but we believe that with all its catastrophic impact, it is also an unprecedented opportunity to build back better and here by the role of corporate, corporate ASEAN cannot be overstated. So we see COVID-19 as an opportunity to shape the new normal. We all know about the devastating path causing millions of deaths and 60 million recorded infections by now. Uh, and therefore efforts must now be doubled to rebuild lives, livelihoods, businesses, and economies to achieve the sustainable development goal. But we also believe that it's an opportunity for all of us to reshape the new normal. COVID-19 has shown us the degree to which the social, economic, and environmental aspects of development are intertwined and how it is impact, impacted by human activity especially that of the business sector. And this, we believe, makes the case even stronger for uh, moving forward in aligned with the Sustainable Development Goals. And while we acknowledge that the triple bottom line is not a new effort, we believe that a new resolve, a new impetus is needed. So moving forward, businesses are absolutely key to rebuilding better and to shaping the future in line with our common goals 
as pre prescribed by the SDGs. The time has come for a mindset change and understanding that change is both needed and good for business. And that is, it is key for organizations to be more ESG and SDG compliant. And when I'm saying that, I'm not talking only about charity under the theme of corporate social responsibility, but it is our core corporate responsibility to align with the principles of the SDGs, including decent work, gender equality, the prescriptions of a low carbon economy and fighting corruptions, among other. This responsibility transcends beyond your bottom line. It is a responsibility to make your contribution, uh, to leave no one behind, as well as to ensure the protection of the only planet we have. Your current customers are aware and they understand the importance of ESG. Your future customers will demand it. Therefore, I believe it is important that business basically uh, takes a first mover's advantage. In fact, many, of course, are already doing it, but uh, with an even bigger rigor at this very moment of time, because reform usually emerges out of crisis. During the recovery from COVID, we need to challenge ourselves and go beyond our comfort zones by elevating ESG as well as mainstreaming the sustainable development goals into core business procedures. But looking beyond consumer expectations, there is also a strong business case for the corporate sector to be on board. The Business and Sustainable Development Commission found that companies could unlock no less than 12 trillion US dollars in market opportunities by 2030 and create 300 million jobs by integrating the sustainable development goals into their business strategies. I therefore encourage businesses to engage even more with organizations such as the UN, uh, the Global Compact Networks in uh, your respective countries. There are so many opportunities to link up to different uh, initiatives such as the UN Guiding Principles on Business and Human Rights, the UN Global Compact, the UN UNEP uh, Guiding Principles on um, Responsible Banking, and the ILO Tripartite Declaration of Principles Concerning Multinational Enterprises and Social Policy. These are all instrumental platforms to promote responsible business. And I also would like to congratulate uh, the Global Compact uh, Malaysia yesterday for launching the SDG SME Toolkit, which is yet another good initiative that uh, businesses can take inspiration from. Of course, government incentives and interventions are key through tax exemptions and regulatory frameworks, budget interventions and policies that provide the overarching ecosystem to promote and legislate the necessary transitions. In terms of providing such conducive ecosystem, I think one of the very strong examples and uh, big ticket uh, examples is the European Union's com commitment to be climate neutral by 2050, an economy with net zero greenhouse gas emissions. This will naturally have a profound and transformative effect on a wide range of industries. But change is happening quickly also within ASEAN. Uh, I'm just referring to the just uh, closed uh, 37th ASEAN summit um, that saw the launch of the ASEAN Comprehensive Recovery Framework. And this framework is built, is, is, is very much to build back better from the COVID crisis through a partnership with the private sector, through uh, a number of strategic thrusts, such as enhancing health systems, such as uh, strengthening human security, such as maximizing the potential of intra ASEAN market and integration, such as digital transformation and advancing a more sustainable and resilient future. So the agendas are very much aligned. And uh, I quote from the summit, business as usual is no longer an option for ASEAN. In the post-pandemic world, uh, we need a paradigm shift uh, 
for ASEAN governments, businesses and civil society to work collectively to enable systemic change needed by the region for a sustainable and resilient future. Now, we as the UN in Malaysia have also a big uh, agenda to work with the private sector. Currently, we uh, are building two initiatives. One is a, a trust fund together with the government where we will coordinate, coordinate financing from various public and private sources systematically to channel to uh, SDGs that fall behind and SDG challenges that need to be addressed in partnership uh, with different actors. And uh, we are also in the midst of developing the so-called Together for SDG Hub uh, to bring together alternative solutions and resource providers from different sectors to prom promote greater contributions to uh, the 2030 agenda. So to conclude, dear colleagues, I applaud all uh, participants from private sector here today, those who are already at the forefront of uh, ESG compliance, and those that are working towards it. Your efforts are very important to achieve the SDGs by 2030. The opportunities for the private sector to make a contribution are manifold, from changing the way to do business, to innovating for sustainable development, to be gui being guided by the SDGs when making investment decisions, to properly channeling your corporate social responsibility to SDG priority areas. All of this is very urgent because we only have 10 years left to achieve the sustainable development goals. And it's also opportune because of the recovery phase from uh, COVID-19. So uh, I express my appreciation that during this unique time in our shared history, you will be part of the community that will shape the new normal. And I hope uh, that you would accelerate your transition to become SDG champions, ESG champions across the different uh, dimensions. With that, dear colleagues, dear friends, I wish you a productive day two of the Go ESG ASEAN Corporate Sustainability Virtual Summit 2020. Nice to meet you all. Bye-bye.